Okay, I'll call to order the meeting of the Town of Sebastopol Board of Supervisors for Monday, May 19th at 7 o'clock. I'll ask that you rise and join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll begin the uh, proceedings with the roll call to establish a quorum. Supervisor Stabenis? Here. Supervisor Tice? Here. Supervisor Weidman? Here. Supervisor Wolfel? Here. And Chairman Zipper? Here. Next item would be the uh, meet and greet, the public participation. What we normally do, our normal procedure, is that we'll start with Linda. They'll, uh, we'll introduce ourselves and then we'll go out in the audience. So. Linda, Lin go ahead. Linda Waite, Clerk Treasurer for the Town of Sevastopol. Dick Weidman, Supervisor, 4108 South Country View Road. Chuck Tice, Supervisor, 4771 Bayshore Drive. Leo Zipper is the Chairman at 3850 Bayshore. Dan Wolfel, Supervisor, 4774 Bark Road. John Stobnes, uh, 3811 Whitefish Bay Road. Victoria. Victoria Sarnish, uh, Sebastopol Resident, 4145 Cherry Road, and League of Women Voters Observer. Bob's Tracker, Clark Lake. John Beck, Township uh, Resident, 5267 Forest Road. Go ahead. Jerry Lenz, 3892 Cherry Road, Sebastopol. My name is Bob Cuffrin. I live in Jacksonport, but I'm here representing the Clark Lake Association. Okay. Bob Conley, I'm here just interested. I live in at Clark Lake. Uh, Del Herbold, Rural Insurance Agent. Jim Dittman, Assistant Fire Chief, Sturgeon Bay Fire. Sally O'Brien, 5347 South Lake Road, Clark Lake. Frank Christensen, Whitefish Court. Charlie and Leslie Boulay, 5438 West Shore Drive, Clark Lake. All right. Do we need to know who you are? Come on. Leslie Chaplin. That's a basketball resident. Okay. Short. Short, short. <laughs> has the uh, agenda been properly noticed? It has. Okay. Well, I need a motion then to adopt. I'll make a motion to adopt. Second. Okay. I might be going too fast here. Does anyone in the, uh, in the audience have anything that they wish to address or have? tell us about before we get into the meeting. Unless you have something that you see on the agenda, I'll let you speak then. So. There are some agenda up front here on the corner, Leslie. Bob, what did you have? We can speak for when the agenda item comes up. The trimming on WD. Okay. All right, anyone else have a concern? Number two. All right, then we'll go on the... Uh, Do we have a motion on the agenda? Yes. It's been made in second. And a second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Approval of the minutes of Board of Supervisor meeting April 21. Well, do we approve April 21, 2014 board minute? Second. Are there any corrections or alterations, additions, or forever hold your peace? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ms. Carey. <coughs> Financial report for April. Account balance, the budget versus the actual with the transactions noted. Need a motion to approve. So moved. 
second. Motion by John, seconded by Chuck. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. <coughs> Oral committee reports. Do we have any? That one from Tourism Zone. All right. Uh, this might be a little lengthy, but... <laughs> well, you're going to cut it down, right? <laughs> Just the tourism <laughs> week was, it was last week. Uh, got some numbers finally for the 2013 season from the Wisconsin Department of Tourism and Tour Tourism Economics. Uh, direct visitor spending in Door County totaled $229 million in 2013. That's an increase of $10 million or 3 point four or five percent over 2012. Over the past five years, the direct visitor spending is up 41.9 million or 16.3 percent. Tourism had a 381.6 million dollar impact on Door County's economy in 13. That's up 14.1 million, 3.8 percent from 2012. Tourism supported a total of 3,001 jobs in Door County last year and an increase of 2% over 2012. Total labor income, $64.6 million was generated for Door County employees as a result of the tourism spending, which is up 4.1% over 2012. Tourism in Door County generated 33.2 million in state and local income tax, or uh, state and local sales tax in 2013. That's up 1.4 million, or 4.2 percent. Door County ranked eighth out of 72 counties in the state in 2013, generating 2.7 percent of all direct visitor spending in Wisconsin. Locally, between 2013 from 2009, which is a five-year period that the Tourism Zone Commission has been in business, the room tax has been collected. Total room tax revenue, $66.8 million. That's up $11.8 million over the past five years. Room tax collected was $3.65 million, which is up $592,000. 30% of the to the municipalities was 1.1 million, that's up 175,000. Occupancy rate went up from 40.48%, 40 40 which is up 3.92% over the five year period. And the daily average rate, which is what's charged for a room, averaged, is $137, that's up $13 over the five-year period. Door County sales tax at half a percent was $3.2 million. That's $254,000 up. So we've been doing real good. We're expecting a good year again this year. Things are looking a lot better uh, coming out of the gates here, and hopefully <coughs> things move. Okay. 50 degrees. Yeah. I'm sorry? It's going to be warming up this weekend. Oh, yeah. Well, He'll clock in like you wouldn't believe. The holiday weekend coming, we've got some, from what I'm hearing, a lot of places are booked already. So. Okay, do we have any other oral committee reports? Hearing none, we do have uh, the minutes of the plan commission that was... Uh, held on February 18th, and another on April 15th, and the Park and Rec Board meeting of April 9th. We have nothing further. We'll accept those and place them on file. License and permits, uh, zoning and building permits issued. For your information, unless you have a question, we'll go on. Under pending business, we'll do the status and uh, discussion and action. 
The first is the the ad for the well testing. And rather than me pretend I know everything about this, I'll call on Linda, who was instrumental in getting the advertising in the newspaper and working with the town of Jackson Port. I don't know, is Sturgeon Bay in this as well? Sturgeon Bay is going to be participating in the program, but they are doing their separate advertising because they don't have regular office hours and the location is a little bit different. So, All right, why don't you give us the what mm -hmm. for and the dates if you possibly can. So the town of Sebastopol and the town of Jacksonport, we, will, we are partic participating with the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point for well, well water testing. So any residents who wish to participate do need to register in advance. You will need to pick up a sample water bottle and you will need to return that on a specific date, which is going to be Monday, July 7th. I'm not going to give you the specific dates right now. It will be appearing both in the Advocate and the Peninsula Pulse and several other press releases and hopefully on the radio. Um, and then on Monday, July 7th, you would need to bring that water sample to the town office here or to the Jacksonport Town Hall. And then on Tuesday, July 8th, we will be driving all of those samples to Stevens Point because they need to be tested within, I thought it was 24 hours, but I believe it's 40 hours. So the university students will be testing that water on July 8th, and then we'll eventually get the results. I don't know what the time frame is um, for receiving the results, but we will be notified. The individual residents will be notified and each of the towns will also be made aware of the test results. There's three packages available. There's a basic homeowner's package for $49. There's a metals only package for $45. Um, a DACT screening, which is the component used in herbicides for $27. Or you can have all three for 113. Again, watch the newspaper. Um, it will be specific for the dates and times. And um, I would also like to thank the Door County Environmental Council, who is chipping in quite a few dollars to cover the costs of publication. So watch the newspapers. Or feel free to call the office. I'll also place it on our town website. All of the information will be there. Nick, are you still actively involved in this or not? Uh, uh, yes, I will be. <laughs> what do you mean, yes, I will be? Well, I, okay. yes, I, glad, I will gladly participate. Okay. In I think we should stress the point that this information will be confidential between the homeowner and the testing of the testing. The yes, I will. local <laughs> officials will only receive a map indicating a general area where the tests were sampled from, but they will not know the exact addresses. So people should not have to be afraid that the town is going to come after them because of a bad well or something. Especially this town. <laughs> Which on occasion? Has okay. Uh, do we have any other comments? Or? All right. Hearing none. Let's move on. Number two is WD project an update on the beach park disease. I understand that there were some uh, calls made to the town hall in regard to we didn't know, nobody told us, and why did you do that? <clears throat> and I'll tell you how we got to where we are. This all occurred back in 2013 at the behest of uh, the county forester, namely Chris. What is that? Was that? Isaac. Who came, who came forward to, with it uh, to the then manager of the Dunes, Donald McKinnon, who met with the Door County Highway Department, two representatives from there. There was one other person I don't recall, but I was there as well. The uh, crux of the deal was that 
the forester had identified the beech bark disease as taking over the entire area. And rather than wait <clears throat> until everything was gone, he indicated that he liked to be proactive in it and make everyone aware. So, excuse me. So the um, actual notifications and information would have come from them being the forester and also the uh, the DNR. And uh, the only written correspondence I have was March 28th of 2014. Uh, but they did have a management plan in place and they did provide it with uh, a map of the entire state park and uh, gave the particulars as far as when this was going to be occurring, namely April 1st through May 31. And if weather did not permit, they would uh, then do it from November 1 through the December 15. They solicited the Door County Highway Department to uh, take care of those trees and because it is a county highway that goes through the park. Um, they were in charge and because of how they were going to handle this situation, um, they needed to close off that road. And I don't, I can't tell you who contacted Algoma Lumber and Dick is from the group so maybe he can explain it. Uh, but they came in and did the harvest and the county of Door uh, basically took out the stumps, struck them away, and as well, um, I don't know if they're finished, but they were nearly finished in uh, bringing the ground surface back to something, some semblance of order. A lot of what you see is old and has been moved about and it does look fresh, but a whole bunch of uh, the other stuff has been trucked away. And I think it was by Algoma Lumber. Right. So. I, it's a bidding process. Okay. Yeah. All right, Dick is on the, uh, are you the Friends of? Or? A member of the Friends, right. All right, why don't you tell us what we got and then we'll open it okay. up for us. So. Uh, well, the Beach Park the disease problem is really a twofold. Problem. One is the scale, the insect that comes in and infects a tree and basically makes it vulnerable to attack by a fungus. So um, what we have noticed is, is just how quickly this scale infestation has, has traveled, how fast it moves, and how devastating it is. So in my own personal um, experience in my woods, uh, within a two-year period, uh, well over half the beech trees in my woods are covered with white scale. And um, once a tree is weakened by the scale, the, the nectria canker comes in, infects the tree. And um, one of the problems with beech as a species is that it, it is very prone to splitting. So obviously when you have an insect like that, that's feeding on the cambium area, that's carrying the water and nutrients in the tree, it weakens the uppermost part of the tree. Those branches, become, those branches simply become weakened, usually uh, start to die, and are prone to breaking off. And some of those trees are probably 30, 20, 30, maybe up to 40 feet tall. So it'll start, it'll start from the top of the tree and work its way down. So it, it, it's one of those uh, very similar to Dutch elm disease, where we had the bark beetles come in first, <coughs> then we had the fungus that followed later. Uh, it's very devastating. The one uh, redeeming uh, quality of beech is that they are prolific uh, seed bearers and if you walk that area, if you walk the trails in the park, you'll see 
literally hundreds and thousands of new beach seedlings coming up. Um, I would predict probably within five, six, maybe seven years, that whole area will be really covered densely with new beach seedlings. Now, how long the scale stays around is, you know, that's, that's hard to predict. So whether or not these will become infected again, when they become of the size that the scale would infect the, uh, the new trees, that, that's unknown. But um, it's one of those scale insects that moves, uh, for a scale insect, it moves extremely fast uh, within a period of one to two years. So. All right, thanks. Reading from the, uh, from the letter that was uh, described by Fred Visti, the new park manager, he indicated that the biggest part, once they're infected, uh, the unexpectedly snap off at about 10 to 15 feet above the ground with any kind of uh, wind force. And also, uh, they did have a website out there uh, that gave you the entire plan. Uh, they were going to cut uh, within 75 feet of a designated area, including the trails, the parking lots, picnic areas, and the buildings, and the beech trees less than five inches and uh, 4.5 feet above ground would not be cut. Uh, the harvest of the trees had been bid out, as Dick indicated, and what you see is what you got. Robert, do you want to start? Good evening. My name is Bob Cuffer, and I represent approximately 220 Sebastopol and Jacksonport residents around Park Lake. I was uh, picked to be the president of the association last year. Paul Schumacher retired from the position. And I want to stop, start by complimenting the town on your scenic byways, uh, wayside that you just finished. It looks outstanding. There's a great uh, entrance into the park. Uh, I'm here to basically express the outrage of the board and residents or members of the association with how the park looks. Uh, the work that the county did, which is within the, the town road right away or the county right away, makes it look like it should be called Tornado Park. It was devastated, the trees, the, the, all the wood that was capable of being turned into firewood was hauled off by the county. The branches and stumps were left behind. Uh, if you look at what Algoma Lumber did, they similarly left massive amounts of debris. I took pictures before and after and during the process and it's really, it's just a tragedy that that's one of the top destinations in the county for tourists and when they come in they'll wonder what happened who who let it happen and i i guess i put the blame on what happened on the dnr for failing to provide information if you went out to that website to try and find information about this it it was released it was released after it was already approved by the dnr board uh, they didn't provide notice. If you as a town should have gotten a notice back in January or back in December of 2013 when it was first being presented to the Natural Resources Board for your comment because you represent such a large portion of that park. I doubt that Linda got anything. Paul Schumacher didn't get anything. I don't know that any of you that live nearby the park got any kind of notification. The letter that they sent out came out about four days before the work was scheduled to begin. So those residents who had questions or objected really didn't have any opportunity at all because the work had already started. They really failed to, to discuss it with the Friends of Whitefish Dunes. They, at least the one member of the association who's on that, that board, uh, Chuck Berenger, said that they didn't really explain the scale of the work that was going to be done. We realize that the town did not initiate the project. That was not, not your project, and I appreciate the fact that you're willing to be a sounding board for complaints about what happened. I would urge you to take a look at the park, think about if that was your, if the park was your property, and somebody came in and cut down all the trees, 
hauled off the firewood and left stuff behind. You'd be calling them and saying, come and clean it up. Finish what you did. Don't just take the stuff that your employees can use or you can resell, but take, take the debris. I understand that some of it is, is left behind, but when the big graders and, and loaders push it around, they're just stirring up more of a mess. A lot of the wood that you see there has been freshly cut. It's not stuff that was laying there for years and years. Um, I, I guess we urge you to let the county know that they need to finish their job. They need to go in and clean it up so that when people come in and they look at, at one of the premier parks in Sebastopol and Jacksonport in the entire county, that they, that they see it as a great don uh, destination. The state has no plans to reforest or do any plannings to, to uh, restore anything. They're gambling that out of a thousand trees or a hundred trees per acre that are left, that there's enough to put out seedlings and to get it to regrow. And it'll take decades before you have the cover that existed before that it was a natural canopy and now that's gone. And it'll take a really long time. And people won't understand how it happened Again, it wasn't what you did, but you, I guess you have a chance to try and urge the county to clean up their mess, which was failing to pick up, at least within their right way, what they cut and the, what they left behind. Yeah, if I could stop you, the entire project was a DNR, right. and they rather than go out and hire anyone else, they hired the county. I don't know how many graders you've seen, but I saw an end loader out oh, there and a small and I cat. I should have said that. Uh, yeah. that's what's working through there now. But what you see today is a lot better than what it had been if you yes. went through there when, and part of it was the removal of those stumps and they had to truck them away. <clears throat> now, it's my understanding that you really can't, Richard, yes. you really can't chip that stuff and expect that it's going to die or go away. Well, you have to understand too, a certain percentage of that is, is left as wildlife refuge. I understand yeah. that. Yeah, and that's that's their policy. That that's a policy they have whenever they go through and, and do a, a cut like that. And maybe to some people it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's it's a it's a policy. They did a much better job when they did the extensive tree removal on the south, right on the south entrance of the park, where they took out all the spruce trees or whatever those were <coughs> in, that, in the forest, right right along before you turn yeah. north. They had, they sent out information to the to associations. They had a forester come out and show the, what was happening to the trees. There were public notices. They, they made an effort to, to let the public know what was going on. Yeah. And I think what happened this time that's so troublesome is that it's like it happened without letting anyone know. And now it looks, it looks horrible. Compared to what it was, it just looks horrible. I guess you know. I'm sorry you, you you know weren't here for the. But we had, they had meetings. They had uh, publications uh, a year or so in advance uh, of explaining the disease. And what? For the beach park, right? Have I mean, pardon? Did they have a notice in the Advocate when they? Modified there was articles in the Advocate. There was articles in Peninsula Pulse uh, explaining the disease and how it's associated with the scale. Um, they had educational programs. Um, in fact, uh, if you were to visit the park, uh, there was pamphlets that were published, there was informational sheets that were, that were published, uh, made available. Uh, the Friends Group even um, distributed some of these uh, around. So, I mean... I looked in the Advocate in the, in when they released their public uh, notice of this management plan. I couldn't find, find it in the advocate. There was a full-fledged uh, article in both the Advocate yeah. and the Peninsula Post. Yeah, really? informational, well before, they well before the whole process. These articles, they yeah. were not so, uh, public notices. Yeah. Okay, as best I can do for you with the information I did have. Thank but uh, that particular meeting, the majority of the information was provided by Chris from the... Uh, <coughs> Forester's office, and uh, according to this, I went down to their park supervisor out of Oshkosh and the ecologist in Madison, so somebody must have known about it. So. 
All right, anyone else wishing to speak? We just had our road inspection meeting on Saturday on our tour of the town, and we did drive through there. And the board is in agreement with you, it does look bad. But the county's bulldozer is still out there. They're still doing work, removing stumps and trying to clean up the mess in the road right of ways at least. But they can't do anything inside the park borders. So, uh, I, I understand that. Okay. Are they planning uh, further uh, cutting uh, in Sebastopol Township? Do you know? By what we've seen, I believe the cutting is complete. Yeah, it's already. Uh, not it's already that something coming. may come up at a later date. But, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll come upon private private landowners to, to do it. All right, the biggest problem we do have is, say... I'm sorry, I didn't understand about the private landowners. Well, I mean, as a private landowner myself, I mean, I realize I have seen the, the scale come into my woods uh, within a matter of two years. And I've, just this last spring, I've taken down probably about five or six really large beech trees. And they're, they're starting to decline already. As you cut them up, you can see the, the entrance points for the, the canker, the fungus that comes in and follows the, uh, follows the scale. So it happens a lot faster than it happened with uh, Dutch elm disease. Okay, anyone else pushing? To... Yes, sir. You say that you, you took out a few beech trees when you noticed some disease. But these cuts along WD are clear cuts, it seems. Did they select only beech trees, or did they cut everything within 25 or 35 feet of the road? It's almost a pure stand of, of American beech. But they cut every tree they saw, didn't right. they? Right, you know. I, I, you know, the forester went through, and if you had walked through that area, you would have seen the infest. I mean, it. It travels so fast that it basically goes from tree to tree to tree to tree. And that, that particular area is almost a pure stand of American beach. But you manage your private beach trees by cutting the ones that were diseased and leaving the ones that were healthy. They cut everything on the road. This was DNR, am I correct? Mm -hmm. I read from the uh, article that said they were going to leave four and a half foot with a five inch trunk behind, but everything else uh, probably went. I was out there to watch the machine. It's really uh, something else and they can get a lot done in one day, but we didn't have the say so, but fortunately, unfortunately, it comes through the town of Sebastopol, a county road <laughs> in a state park. So we got everybody involved. So. Okay, last chance. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yeah, I was just wondering, you know, as a, as a board here, um, if you feel that what they did was correct in the park um, and stand by it, that's one thing. But I think it would be a strong vote of a lot of people we've been talking to and so on if maybe you express your disappointment with what's happening on property within your jurisdiction, too. I mean, what they did in that park is massive and there's big equipment going in there and even though they left the five inchers you start crushing those roots and everything so they're, they're going to die off too they're not going to come back quite as fast as you think and they had some big equipment in there if you look at the trees that are left they're all scraped and battered and everything else okay so uh, i would just like to encourage you to get together and maybe send something to the park showing your disappointment and how they handled it Okay, I did invite uh, Fred Visti, the park manager, to the meeting tonight. It was kind of late notice for him. And as well, uh, Chris did not return my phone call, so we could have been speaking to the person responsible. Um, it's kind of hard when they don't, they don't show up. Okay, thank you for your concern. Okay. Let's go down number three, then, is the Door County Zoning Ordinance. <coughs> the text amendments, 
John, are you familiar with all this good stuff? Mm -hmm. No. We were going to go over it, and we haven't had time to have a meeting yet, so we will have a meeting by before the end before the next meeting. This is in. Uh, to bring the county ordinance into compliance with the State Legislative Act 170. Read that on page two, on the top. Okay, so you're gonna take a look at it down the road? Yes. All right. So when you do, make sure that you bring it back here. All right. Okay, number four is the Schultz uh, conditional use permit approval. Uh, Randy and Linda Schultz had petition for uh, conditional use, and it was granted. They brought their information here, and we approved it as well. So it's actually an FYI. Business owners and workers' compensation insurance policy package, RFP, in your packet you'll see that we did advertise for <coughs> a request for a proposal on insurance coverage. And as of today, we had only one person or one firm that responded to the ad, and it was our previous supplier of our insurance coverage, namely Rural Mutual with Del Herbold as the agent. What did I say? Bill. Dell. 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 I know Dell. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, before us is uh, the only item that we do have. The, I am told that our current uh, policy expires June one. Oops. So it's uh, incumbent upon us this evening to uh, make a motion to accept and approve. I move to accept the. Uh, Quote from the Rural Mutual Insurance Company for the Workman's Compensation and Employer's Liability Policy. I'll second that. You want the amount? $12,376? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Okay, uh, all in favor say signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks for coming, Dell. Dell was D E L. Dell. Dell. With D E L. Dell. Or Bell. <laughs> Maybe fifty percent less than it was before. Okay. Public nuisance and regulation of outside storage, out, unsightly premises, which we've seen quite a few of on our tour. Uh, this was brought to our attention some while ago and wanted to know if we would take another look in the actual public nuisance that we do have. Ordinance number one of 2011 does speak to a lot of the items uh, and what is a public nuisance and what is not. We approved that on the 23rd of May, 2011. And also the Ordinance 2 of 2011, Regulation of Outside Storage, Unsightly Premises and Hazards, uh, that was forwarded and approved on the same date, I believe. It is. <coughs> and with that, I brought from uh, Palmetto, Florida, uh, an article that was the city there is uh, really concerned about it because of the unsafe uh, structures that they do have that are empty and no longer uh, usable for anything else. And they're taking a real bite into it and they want to vacate, repair, or demolish. So I brought that along for 16 pages long and I thought rather than us try to invent something we might plagiarize someone else's uh, 
and also get into the penalty part of it and uh, again take a look at an appeal uh, property owner have uh, the ability to ask for a hearing and go that particular route so because Chuck Tice was the main uh, person on the initial ordinances that we did pass um, were you able to take a look at what we had? And well, one of the questions that was brought up was uh, whether or not we had penalties included in our ordinance, which we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a first offense penalty. <coughs> it could be a forfeiture of not less than $100, no more than 500 And each day, of the violation constitutes another penalty, so it could get quite expensive real quick. Uh, second offense jumps up to $500 minimum and $1,000 max. So uh, it's just a matter of enforcing the rule and, and having the citation served and going to court. Uh, that always presents the problem when you go to court, you may not win. Uh, you may only get a portion of what you went looking for, but uh, there are a few things in our ordinance, I think, that, that could be uh, brought up to snuff or, or increased, put a few more teeth into it to make it a, a more viable, more strict ordinance, and we may have to look at it that way. I did obtain the entire Palm Meadow, Florida code and went through it. Uh, they've really buckled down. They've, they've actually brought in to their ordinance building codes by number, by statute, uh, right down to the practically the last nail you pounded into the stairway. Better be properly installed or <laughs> you could be in trouble. So whether we want to go that route, get that strict, we may have to if we want to enforce some of these things, but uh, I think with, with our county ordinances, our uh, sanitation department, health and welfare, uh, animal welfare, plus our own ordinance, I think we've got a, a pretty good paper now. It's just that we need to start acting on them, I guess. All right, the only uh, thing I can add to that is that the uh, and Tim, maybe you can help me with that, but the uh, egress, I don't know, there, is there a minimum available for you to get to a structure? Like in a driveway or well, there's, you know, entry you into the building? Well, there's a lot of different driveway widths depending on the, the property size and things like that. I know, uh, uh, Chuck, you've had a little bit of conversation with the chief on this, I believe, too, correct? Um, you know, front yards can be packed full of vehicles and dumpsters and so much garbage you right. cannot access the property. So public safety-wise, there's there's a lot that goes along with this. It's not just the fire side, it's EMS, law enforcement, everything, so. Yeah, I highlighted some of the information on that, uh, their unsafe structure ordinance, and it does indicate that they're looking at the disrepair to the point of being hampering foot traffic in an emergency. And they're looking at the stress loads in, in, case in excess of the code. And actually an item or a building that was built in violation of the code. And the structural damage or the unsafe or unsanitary situation. And we did see a lot of them. Uh, they haven't uh, been cleaned up over the years that we've been looking at them. I think it's time for us to do that, but I wanted to alert everybody. That I think a notice would be given first. I don't know quite how we're going to do it, if we're going to do it through our inspector program, or I do know that Tim Merlash indicated he would have, he'd be willing to help with us, uh, with the fire department uh, in the city to see if he can't get some of this corrected. But we do have, as Chuck was saying, we need to come up with some kind of penalty. But if they're going to be paying fines, 
with their dollars and not using it to clean up, then we're right back to zero again. But I think the ordinance that I brought up here uh, indicates that the city was going to move and and take the property and clean it up. And then the last last bit was they would put a lien on the building or on the property. I don't know how legal that is, but I guess if you want to get your pay for what you've done. And we, we don't have the power of condemnation, do we? Uh, I don't think so. We have village powers. Well, so, we don't. We can yeah. do it, but not not for not for the basis of purchase. Right. I mean, we wouldn't. I mean, we would not condemn something to buy it. No. no. But I mean, the key words I think I'm looking. At, just we only got the one page of the Palmetto Property Maintenance Code, but. The key words in there is structure unfit for human occupancy uh, is yeah. probably the key. We might have seen a couple of those. Yeah, we yes, did. More than one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're a good witness. Too. Yes, I certainly am. And my question is, what are you going to do about enforcement? You write an ordinance, how are you going to enforce it? That's exactly. Because I talked to the deputy sheriff the one day, he was over there trying to do something, and he said, we don't have anything we can enforce. So I went to the colony, I've talked to zoning, and I've talked to sanitation. I still haven't gotten anybody to even come out and take a look. Yeah, well, they will if we hold them to the, hold their nose to the ground and get it done. But. Because the last uh, eight months has been a steady flow of garbage to the property of Rushi's, to the south of me and across the street from me. Right. The city dump looks much better than <laughs> Rushi's property. And that house is not something that you could inhabit. That had a fire there, what, 12, 14 years ago, I can't remember right. exactly. The only thing they ever did was nail a board over the window. So between the cats, the rats, the snakes, and everything else, it's yeah. encroaching on us. Chickens. And all the junk vehicles. My God, there's junk vehicles everywhere. And they've been there for so many years. If you've got oil or gasoline or anything, they're going to be leaking it. And how long is it going to be before it starts contaminating the water in the area? Yeah, right. Not to mention there's a couple of interesting animals. Oh, interesting <laughs> animals. Yeah, running across my front yard. They don't take care of anything. Fencing, feeding, shelter, nothing. Oh, we found something larger than a chicken. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very large. It looked like a bull, but it might have been a steer. It was big, no matter what it was. Well, they've got a new one now. It isn't quite as big. They've replaced the old one. I, I don't know if they ate them or gave them away or what. Well, this one could feed a lot of hungry people. Um, one of the things that came up, just as a footnote, was when we were working with the city on the fire protection, uh, city administrator said that we could easily use the um, the city's uh, no, I, the word slips my community officer community officer to uh -huh. uh, to deliver the kind of notice that we would initially start with uh, for some form of enforcement mm -hmm. that their deputy quote would would do that if we so choose and that might be a vehicle that we start okay so, we'll let uh, the assistant chief take over then. <laughs> we've had a handful of those in the city. You know, we've had the same problem that you guys were having. Um, same talk was had. You know, what kind of teeth are going to be in that? Um, but you got to remember, these people that you're going to be dealing with don't have deep pockets. You're going to be just like you said. You're going to be finding them. You're not going to probably take care. You're not going to get your money back out of them. So we've worked with a few of them, not giving yeah. them citations, working with them, and actually got further than we would have by. I do know you had one guy that, or one family anyway, that had a large number of vehicles. And then your your ordinance allowed them, if they were registered, they could keep them, right? Yep. They could, couldn't have, uh, could not store unregistered vehicles on the property. <coughs> so he registered them all and the problem still existed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. In our ordinances, uh, we do have 
an abatement procedure, uh, we have to seek court action or court order. But we can go in and clean the place up with that court order, seize the property. If the owner does not come and collect it, we have the right to sell it under state statute and recoup our investment. Uh, any excess funds would have to be returned to the owner, but uh, yeah. it all boils down to a court action, and, and you, the, the town or the neighborhood is going to have to spend money in order to get the place cleaned up. And then you're going to have to have a judge that sees the same way you do and give you that order to, to see that it does happen. Uh, we are trying to work with, like I said, animal welfare. Uh, in a case where there are animals on the property, we can come out, have them take the animals. Uh, you've got vermin and, and uh, other things running around the property. Uh, it's a sanitation problem or a health problem. We can get those officials out there and give them citations for, for violating those ordinances or just for having that situation in the neighborhood. They're afraid of getting sick. <laughs> the thing is that the main problem with these particular places is nobody is living in them. So uh, it, it's a unfit structure for human inhabitants, but there are no human inhabitants there, so uh, they don't get involved. surrounding. I believe the ordinance I put together here uh, in 2011 covers just about everything that the uh, other ones I've used for, for examples and drawn ideas from. And according to state statutes, we do have quite a bit of authority. It's just that we need a judge and an attorney on our side and some money behind it to start acting. But you know, if the sanitarian should get involved, if, even if there's nobody living there, there's people living around you. Yeah. Right. Whereas if you have rats and mice, they don't know where the property lines are. They're not just going to stay within that area. They're going to branch out. Yeah, that'd be so cool. you as a neighbor would have, I mean, I would think the sanitarian, if there's a mess, and could go in on that situation. I'm not sure, but... Well, that, that would be public health officer, right? Well, sanitarian, sanitarian. can handle the sanitation business. Uh, right now, I am considering soil and water. Uh, we have a situation where we have animals and we have manure, and Bill Schuster is in charge of soil and water uh, farming problems. He may be the person to... To start with? Set well, uh, to work with, and and rather than just go with one at a time, get them all involved. We got a fire hazard, we have a health hazard, we have a sanitation hazard. Uh, get everybody together, get the sheriff on our side, and we'll go out there, inspect that property, and go from that point. Okay. The property you mentioned is only one of about a dozen we found as, or, or know of right now. Uh, we went on our road tour Saturday and we looked at several of them, uh, noticed a few more. Some, most are not as bad, but uh, are getting to that situation. So something needs to be done and I think it's time. Well, I certainly appreciate your efforts. Getting that cleaned up it should make life a lot easier. Yeah. The only um, thing I can attest to is the fact that we didn't have one uh, trying to think. I thought it was on a Dennis. Linda, do you remember? Was that Dennis Lane? Or I don't remember. Well, we were successful with one on uh, Brower Road. Uh, the, the zoning department helped us with that quite a bit. There were quite a few um, vehicles, abandoned vehicles, and the property owner did cooperate. Oh, Looks that was, much um, nicer. 
on Brower. That was south of Forest uh, mm -hmm. Forest Road. I don't recall the one on Dennis at all. That was a garbage. I well, think. John uh, Teichler and I showed up with a dumpster. Oh yes. Okay, now I know <laughs> which one you choice. mean. <laughs> right. And we That's told right. him he either filled it up on or rounds. we would help him with some of the workers from the county slimer <laughs> and pick up his yard and within two days everything was cleaned up. I mean, if that's what it takes. And there was one on Matthew Road too. And, uh, with the neighbors working with this person, managed to convince him and help him clean up his property and you know, yeah. just by having the neighbors go and talk with him and offer to help make it look better seemed to work in this particular situation okay so very good we're looking for ideas so let's um, bring her back but make sure that we do something about it All right, we'll keep her on the uh, pending business agenda and uh, see what our take is on that. Broadband uh, grants number seven. Looks like Linda's writing on here, so we'll let Linda take care of it. This was on last month's agenda and requested be brought back again under pending business. I did speak with this gentleman at um, the Wisconsin Department of Administration. Obviously, the cycle for this year, 2014, is um, out of the question now. However, he did put us on the email to receive emails for the next term, which will probably be coming out late summer or fall. Um, there's a, if you go to this website, you can click on the map for the town of, or the area for the town of Sevastopol and you'll see that there are already five or more broadband providers in Sevastopol. So I asked him what our chances were of getting a grant if you already have providers. And he said there's all kinds of criteria, criteria and you'd probably need to work with a private company such as AT&T or Charter to um, pursue a grant. So we'll just watch for the email this summer or fall. So your last statement there is that we need to partner with the private company? Mm, yes. Okay. He didn't mention any standard uh, speed, transmitting speed or anything like that? No, he didn't. Is there some, I mean, tell me broadband, what is the definition of broadband? Faster than dial-up. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to the expert on the end. Oh, boy. <laughs> We got the expert right back there. Um, the broadband is just how it flows, you know, the bandwidth. Yeah, okay. But um, it has nothing to do with the speed, transmitting speed, or anything. Well, it depends upon what you're pushing it over, how much resistance there okay. is and stuff, you know. I mean, if you're pushing it over glass, you can go pretty fast, but if you're pushing it over copper, it makes it nosedive pretty fast, so. Mm -hmm. Right, depending on, oh. your grant would be for an area where there's not enough density okay. for charter or someone else to come in there. So, you know, right. you would try to work for So it'd be, that. it'd be new rather than upgrading Correct. the speeds mm -hmm. and paying somebody that already gets it. Yeah. So. Well, one, of the, one of the problems is, I mean, even where a cable doesn't reach, they have access to satellite uh, cellular mm -hmm. correct so you know, I, I know which what, they're subject to wavelengths you know satellite yeah. and everything is an individual might be sufficient on some of those other sources but if you had a business or if you were looking at an opportunity or you had a motel or something there's not enough bandwidth inside that to be able to actually offer broadband service okay. you find it as two or three people log on, everybody's speed would go down appreciably. So you might find a pocket where you could partner with like Charter or somebody and say, we'd like you to move into this area, it impacts the business, it impacts the individuals and that kind of thing. I know with our phone company, we, we go out and put these, put a, they call it a D-slam, you go out so far and then you run the regular dial tone over the copper and then you hit this D-slam and you add 
you add the DSL in so you can go out farther and add more people, whereas that's fed by fiber. So that goes all the way back to the office. So, you know, you're looking at, but you're looking at going out and finding places that are inaccessible, yeah. you know, because both sides of the, of the, of our town have um, charter, right? Yeah. They come up 42 and are the Bay Shore and then up Lydon. So you'd be looking at some things like maybe Holiday Acres or something like that where you could get a grant. Yeah. Clark Lake. Clark's sake, you know, something like that. My understanding is broadband was all going to be fiber, right? Real terminology of it? No, no, no not necessarily. Not really. It's just the... It's however you can get it out there to the customer. Okay. Fiber's the fastest. Well, yeah, fiber's the fastest, of course. Okay, we're going to be notified when the next grant thing is up? Yes. All right. New business, Spartan uh, notice of injury claim for damages. Can we back up a minute? Yep. You had, there was something in here about the Door County Advocate, what, are, what was that in there for? That was Just for advertising for the request for a proposal for oh, okay. insurance coverage. Oh, uh, okay. Know what that was. Okay. Verification. You got to look in the lower right hand corner. <laughs> Okay. This is Door County. Oh, way down there? Yeah. Well, I need yeah, stronger glasses than these. <laughs> Let me see that because I... <laughs> oh, yeah, I was able to read that perfectly. Thank you. Yeah, Linda does a nice job. What did we pay for this? A dime? It's no, the smallest thing I've ever seen. Twelve dollars. She reduced it. For I'm sorry. I have to stay within a budget, you know. <laughs> you got a free yeah, the Okay, the notice of injury and claim for damages was served upon me as chairman of the board and sue today as school board president and gary riley and it has to do with a crash on january 9 2014 yes between mr riley and miss martin i believe her name is peggy martin Anyway, the damages that the attorney is looking for is uh, 5000 for medical, 5 for pain and suffering, 2 for Aurora Care, and a total of $18,000 from the town of and the school and Gary. So what we did is take it to the our attorney, who in in turn said to send it on to our insurance carrier, <coughs> which we did. We're waiting for a recommendation, or did we receive anything yet? We have not yet. Okay. And normally, because it's a, uh, they have to give us a notice of claim first, we need to respond within 40 days, I think it is. So we'll wait for that, and then we'll have to bring it before the board to either uh, deny it or whatever. Richard, did you have that school, before your group? The school district already has, uh, is in the process with our insurance company of, okay. of well, recognizing the claim and dealing with it. So Why, I, I don't think it's, it's going to be the town that's going to be. So no, a, a real strange notice here. It is not on an attorney's letterhead. Yeah. They don't have the to be. The attorney has not answered our attorney's request for information. There's no other information other than the, the notice that there are claims for damage. I mean, there's no proof there even was an accident, as far as we know. So, uh, it's, it's oh, yeah. real strange. New business number two, MC <laughs> Golf LLC. <laughs> Change of agent approval and disapproval, and Linda, you can explain now. Um, just standard procedure. I was advised that MC Golf, uh, the current agent, Mike Fannin, still no longer desires to be the agent, and that Carl Beckstrom does wish to be the agent. Carl came into my office. He has completed the proper paperwork. This will be. Um, 
and the um, the license actually needed to be changed with the new agent. Uh, when you file a request for a change of agent, it can happen. Um, it happens immediately, subject to the approval or disapproval of the board. So I'm looking for verification from the board. Accepting Carl Beckstrom as agent for MC Golf LLC, doing business at Cherry Hills, and that will be up for renewal with a new license period beginning July 1st. But a change of agent is subject to board approval. Okay, did you do your normal uh, check? I did do my normal check and all is well. Okay. Need a motion to approve. I move to approve. I'll second that. Motion made and seconded to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, let's uh, let's go down to um, number seven, approval of vouchers, bills, and claims, April 22 through May 19. Are there any questions on those? Well, do we approve vouchers, bills, and claims for April 22 through May 19, 2014? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Both. And we'll tickle the correspondence before we go back to the road work. <clears throat> uh, to the correspondence came from the public hearing on the May 27 for uh, Edith Mass and single family resident encroachment. And we've already acted on this. Yes. No. We did that last. This meeting. is just a notice of the RPC. We did this is a notice of the hearing. I'm not sure why they got on two different ones, but yeah. must have been paperwork. And also from the county clerk uh, reference to the true copy of the mandatory ordinance and also the copy of that ordinance. The letter, Division of Transportation Investment Management. Our total payment for the quarter was forty-five oh two twelve. Uh, and we also have the in lieu of payment from the State of Wisconsin DNR and the. WPS is wanting to know <clears throat> construction project. Yes. They they can cut across our road, but we we should let them know. They thought that was clever. So. All right. <clears throat> and then the last one was the uh, Wisconsin ushers in pedal, pedal pub law. I think you need some of these. They can pedal from bar to bar. I don't know. Here, you want to take a look at that? <laughs> I'm glad the governor had time to sign the bill. <laughs> or is that him on the pedal push? If we had this for our rummage sale at the town park, we would hey. have, I would see if we could rent one of these, Linda. There's got to be somebody that has them. 16 people oh. pedaling and drinking at the same time. 16 people get out a pedal thing and they pedal. While they're drinking. It's allowed drinking, on, drinking. A, on a moving vehicle is what it amounts to. Open drinking on a moving vehicle. The vehicle pedals by the participant sitting at the bar. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. The guy that steers the machine has to keep his blood alcohol level at 0 0.02 or lower. <laughs> you barely have a car. <laughs> they got a picture of it. <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay. Okay, let's uh, do the announcements. Uh, the assessment open book is Friday, May 30, from 10 to 2, uh, 10 to 12. The community yard sale, uh, June 7. If you have any need to bring your wares, contact Linda. A few spaces left. Say what? 
There's a few spaces left. Just a few? Five out of 20 are left. And the clerk would like to be out of the office from June 11 through the 16. I don't know if we can give her that authority or not. She's the boss. I, would see that. I think that was just a notice that she's going to be gone, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. Where is that? Board of Review is June 23 from 1 to 3 at the town hall. Our next meeting is June 23 at 7. You know, we could change that and then have our meeting at 3, couldn't we? Um, also, a reminder to anyone wishing to serve on the various committees that we do have, uh, contact any of us. I've made several inquiries, but I don't have any takers. I'm looking for, I think, two people to serve on the plan commission. Fire and Rescue will get one more in the PEG channel. Uh, if you have anyone interested in serving there. And then we are going to reinvent and resurrect our nuisance uh, committee. So if that's to your liking, give me a holler and we'll make sure you get on there. Okay. So that board of review has to be between one and three? It's got to be for two hours. Yeah. yeah, but does it have to be in the middle of the day like that? I think it has been most of the time. Well, I know it it has been for the last few years. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Did you already seven. notice that or what? Oh, yes. It's oh. been properly yeah. noticed. <laughs> then we're done. Yeah, otherwise we could back it up three to five or so. Well, yeah, there's quite a gap between <laughs> three yeah. and seven. Okay. Well, it depends on who wants to four hours. Okay, let's go back to the road work 2014 at your desk tonight. We supplied you with uh, the Board of Supervisors meeting from our road inspection held on Saturday, May 17. Chuck was our note taker. And I know you didn't have much time to take a look at it, but it's pretty inclusive. Did a very um, fine job. He can do it again next year. Yeah, letter E. Very fine job. Letter E we like best because there's nothing there. E? Hmm? Oh. oh well. There's room That's because it's included in D above. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll be reviewing inspected connections. Yes. Okay. So basically, it was uh, where we were. Uh, and we also came along, Linda, to reduce some of the ratings that we had done uh, previously. We don't have a rating system again until next year, correct? Correct. It's done by end. So we don't have to do anything with that? We don't have to do anything with it this year. Okay. Let's, uh, let's have a motion to approve the minutes from... Uh, that Chuck took on May 17th. I make a motion to approve the Board of Supervisors road inspection um, Saturday, May 17th. Second. Okay. Motion made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, let's go to my sheet that I provided. There should be, if they all copied, they should have three. <laughs> Let's start with the very first one, Shower Road Project. Uh, we inspected that. It looks like a really nice job. The uh, latest information I have is that they're either going to pave it tomorrow or Wednesday or Wednesday and Thursday. There will be two lifts and it will total I think two and a half inches of paved area. Because of the saturated ground, there is a problem with doing the shouldering at the same time. However, uh, it will be accomplished. So where we're sitting at, the, it was a $141,000 project. We got confirmation from the DNR with their contribution at 71,000. We are using our local road improvement money from the DOT at 20,000. The county parks 
contributed twenty thousand as well, and our drop was thirty thousand dollars, and that totals the one forty one. It took a long time to uh, get to that kind of an agreement, but with Linda's help, everybody being held hostage until they write her a check. Okay, the other is Forest Road, Country View to South Brower. We indicated there that we would uh, like to do a wedge and overlay. It was last work done in 2007 and it appears to be the only section of Forest Road that really is in dire need of correction. But the footage distance is 5,491 feet. Bechtel Road all of a sudden resurrected from someplace, Clark Lake to State Junk Highway 57. It's just less than a mile. I have it here as a four. And when I went back to check it, it was actually a seven that we reduced to a five. And we indicated that we'd like to take a look at that one. We did not talk about a partic particular application. And the other is a Valmy Road that runs from County Trunk T to 57. It's only 685 feet in length. However, it is 44 feet wide. Last worked in uh, 1998. Yeah, I showed it as a five rating and been corrected to a three. three. And we downgraded it this time to a two. two. Other roads were evaluated and I don't need to have to go through those, but we just didn't stop at those. So. Culvert inspection, monitoring, and replacement if warranted. Uh, West Shore at Erdman, East Town Line, west of Lawrence. And I think Lawrence has got a Z rather than an S. Uh, Clark Lake, west of North Brower. And Lice, north of Clark Lake. And Clark Lake, east of State Town Highway 42. And West Dunn off of Cherry, Cherry Hill. I've already talked to the county. They're going to open up uh, Clark Lake, North Brower Road to see what they can find there. Look, it appears as if either the bottom is out of the culvert or else the top has rusted through. There is a, a dip there of about four and a half five inches and it's a good indicator that it has to come up. Depending on the size of the culvert installed, if it's 36 inches or more, we can get half of the cost through the county funding program. So we're going to try to do that. Let's put in all 36 inches culverts or bigger. I think that needs a 48-inch covert in order to get that house. <laughs> okay. And the other one, uh, but I have it down as number eight on your item here, that, that's going to be uh, opened up right away is Heverley east of South Brower. And that's that sinkhole by the uh, doctor, what's his name? Yep. Right by Geisel Creek. Yeah, and it's really, uh, it is undermining, so. And the ditching uh, without actually going, um, I went back out there again and took a look and there wasn't any water in that ditch on the west shore. But if it continues to be a problem, we'll have to get in there and uh, re-ditch that. Potholes were identified on North Park, or on Dunes Park Road, east of South Lake, Drive by Robert Sprecka. <laughs> West Jorns, east of Peterson. South Brower, midway between Heverley and East Dunn, and Walker, west of 42. Other required to do jobs were water in a ditch problem on Clark Lake, 
use of 42, that would be at the Wilkie establishment. Maple Heights, uh, northeast and south, excessive chips on the lawn, and that will be swept and picked Wednesday or Thursday of this week. Uh, with the excess stuff coming over here to the town park. Uh, tree trimming removal along Whitefish Bay Road west of uh, North Brower. Chuck and I went back out there after to measure and we found that all of the trees are within the 33 feet right away and there are a lot of standing dead. So rather than capture them all and remove them. I'll talk with the immediate property owner to the south, which is Bernie Geisel, and wait until after he removes the crops and maybe we can just drop that side into the field. But on the other side, we do have a cemetery and we can't be so lucky. So I will be in touch with our tree trimmer, Acorn, and see what he can do for it. Normally, uh, we can lessen the, the cost if we have some kind of arrangement for the wood to be taken uh, immediately and people have expressed an interest to have that happen. Whitefish Bay Park, uh, Dan was going to be checking in on a protruding piece of metal He's, uh, on the old launch. I'm going to meet the welder out there on Wednesday night and take a peek and see what he can do. Okay. Cap it. You're going to cap it or cut it, it off? At least we'll see it. <laughs> and items already taken care of. Martin Road has got a hidden driveway sign east of Windermere. Martin Road's all cut for utilities, and we've been working on that one. Uh, they offered to fix and repair the opening they created. We don't think it's sufficient. We'd like to see something about two foot wide so that we don't create another problem. But we have correspondence, we can get back to those people and they seem to be willing to, uh, to do it properly. Clark Lake and Matthew street, line, uh, street signs were missing that they were all in place when we did a check the other day. Curve signs missing on Windermere. I talked to Buck, he'll try to get those up yet this week. And a pothole on the edge of the road at Timber Ridge was no longer, had been taken care of. <laughs> okay, in addition, we do have the replacement of some fire numbers caused by reckless snowmobilers or errant plow operators. You've uh, taken care of both of those? Uh, yes, I did Audrey? contact um, planning department Audrey Flores lives there and she's placed the order. Okay, very good. Orders. Okay, and when that happens and it's uh, non-attributable to somebody else, we could either charge back to the property owner I don't know what the cost would be, 40 or 60 bucks, or else we'll pick it up ourselves. The nuisance and unkept, unkempt yards are identified as two of them by Jerry on Cherry Road. Old County OR, East Whitefish Bay, South Brower, Old Highway Road, Gordon Road, and also four, two, five, seven, across from the mill. We'll work on those without, <laughs> the last time we made any attempt on the wire class or the, who's there now, Sylvia Mus Muscat. Muscat. Uh, we had all the artists up in air because they didn't want us to take down their most photographed and most painted. <laughs> Right? You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Across from the mill. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. You don't know the artist. <laughs> <laughs> Buff Drive is in the junction with Martin. We'll have a new stop sign added. It'll be southbound. 
indicating that the traffic uh, from the right does not stop underneath the sign and also added to the northbound on Martin will be a sign that says nobody from the left will stop. Coming. For that particular item, I think you may need a stop ahead sign placed further up the road. It will be. It's a and thousand. You definitely are going to need some flags. <clears throat> that's what they do. In the, of the new sign. That's the standard procedure. Okay, mowing of the dishes. Uh, ditches, we decided that we would do two widths and commence the, uh, the mowing at the ending of the flowering of the wild flowers. <laughs> and grasses, too. And grasses. So it'll be uh, June sometime and no later than the second week in July. Winter maintenance will continue with Door County Highways with the salt and sand application and the other items currently in the letter of understanding dated November 2013. And the plowing routes will be reviewed with the Door County Highway Department. I did talk to John Kologi today and he thought maybe we could have a meeting over at his place and he could explain it all. Crack filling will be given more consideration this year and use where appropriate. Also recommended is the town take the action necessary for creation and regulation of the unkept yards. And we're looking for committee members to, uh, to serve on that one. And we are going to update the privilege in the street agreement to include utilities and the requirements that they all obtain a driveway permit as well. Topsoil will be added to the inside curve at Bluff Road and Martin. That was a leftover item from last year that will get done. So if you have anything that you wish to add, I left a little space on the bottom of page two and page three. But otherwise, we'll get those things in order. The, uh, for us to decide what we're going to accomplish is going to be a bigger issue because we have no idea of the actual cost. Uh, guesstimated costs. On a seal coat alone, that's a seal coat and chip, is about 16,005. Per mile? Per mile. If we were to do an overlay of one and a half inches or better, it's 65 to 70,000 per mile. And a wedge and overlay of a total of two, two and a half inches gets up into the $86,000 per mile cost. And if we were to pulverize, grade, put down the gravel, go to a two and a half inch lip, and the hot mix uh, would be 116,000 per mile. I think chip and seal is sounding really good. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. How did I know that? Well, if you can't put a value on the uh, irate property owners uh, that we have you, to. Uh, you can at 116,000. <laughs> well, we can reach a, we can reach a happy medium with. Uh, <clears throat> what did you say? Inch and a half. What's the the first the first uh, spec on that overlay? Wedge. Inch and a half. Just an over. Mm -hmm. Just the overlay of inch and a half compacted to inch and a half. To end up with inch and a half. Yeah. Yes. Is sixty five thousand a mile. And that includes uh, wedging the, the edges to bring it up the level. No. Yeah. That's just, nothing. That's just inch and a half. The wedge and overlay <clears throat> and going to two inches would be 86,000. I'm of the opinion, though, that the 1.5 would be some kind of a, a wedge anyway to get the 2% in the middle. So. Okay. So anyway, the decision that you need to make tonight is what are you going to do? Are you going to 
go out for a request for a proposal to see what others will do it for, including the county of Dora, and they can bid on it. Uh, they, they can't give you a bid. They can go on an estimate or not to exceed. And in the past, we've done both. We've gone to the private sector, and we normally only get uh, one because of our location mainly, and that would be Northeast Asphalt. And uh, we can do it again, but all it does is delay any kind of activity on getting us to get it accomplished. But it's one of the true ways of finding out how much it actually would cost. So those figures you gave us were estimates from the highway department, Dark County Highway Department. Well, they were, but they weren't. Uh, it was a guesstimate of where we were in the past, in 2013. The actual billing that they did. Right. Okay. And uh, where I gave them a little increase as far as where they might be this year around. And uh, if we're going to be competitive on it, we're not going to give out one's information without the other. So <clears throat> We do have the authority to bypass any kind of advertising to go directly to the local <coughs> highway department if we like. I think it makes it cleaner if we go out for bids. That way, there's no question about where it's going. We can do it. I just need to know what kind of application you want on which road. In the past, we've had questions on the competitiveness of the bids. Uh, one person quoted X miles at two and a half inch or inch and a half, and the other bid came in at. X number of tons per mile. And there's quite a bit of difference when you compare the two. Uh, I think we have to have a real specific bid document uh, so that we get the same information from each uh, bidder. Well, I think last time there was an issue brought up after the fact. But we can definitely advertise for the tonnage as well. Because we don't know how much tonnage goes in a mile. Yeah. They do. Well, they, they do. do. But they, yeah. Well, they should. That's what the business yeah. they're in. But even when we opened the bids last year, we had that problem where right. one was quoting this, one was quoting that. We couldn't get any comparison. Well, uh, we can specify the much. Anyhow, we only have enough. If we spent everything we had budgeted, we couldn't do two miles. No. Okay. The, the one thing that we should remember, and I was going to say that first, to give you an idea of where we're at, the uh, budget for our roads construction was at $150,000. The road maintenance, which includes snow plowing, mowing, whatever, our snow plowing costs through May? Through of May. 2014 yes. has already consumed $84,093.82 of our total budgeted $90,000. So we better not get any snow in the month of October, November, and December, or else we aren't going to make it. But. Uh, the mowing, uh, we put in 14,000 this year. We were at 7,500 last year, but we're going to the uh, two widths this time. And the uh, the other stuff is. Do you have to take Shower Road off of that 150 also? No, I told you where that was before. Mm -hmm. no, but 30, what do we have to take? 30,000 30, 30, 30, 30, will come out of that. That will take that out of the clerk's oh, salary. Well, oh, no, we won't pay for it until it's finished. It, it's, so we got 120000 mm -hmm. $125,000 gone already. So. <laughs> well, you aren't going to get very much done. $25,000. Well, um, yeah, 
Yeah, 11, I mean, we're talking about one mile of road and maybe the, the strip in Valmy, Valmy. Be, between 42 and Whitefish Bay. Yeah. And we are so we're we're at 100 grand, <laughs> roughly right. Yep, right. So. Well, the only other way to bring your roads up to snuff is to uh, go to the annual meeting and or a special meeting and have your town town's people approve a borrow. Is that how that works? Or we can exceed, exceed the highway um, well, allocate allocation yeah, but we of also five thousand dollars per mile. But we also have to have them approve the borrowing. To make it we work. Can, well, you we can exceed the levy uh, limit. Not to exceed the levy, yeah, to exceed the levy limit, but if it's for highways, you would have to have posed the question to exceed $5,000 per mile. We have 85 miles, so roughly there's, we would have to spend more than $500,000. Yeah, so the money, we, we can, but we, it, I, as, I, as I understand it, 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 the question comes down to an annual meeting to exceed the levy limit so that we can add more money to our our uh, road maintenance budget, correct? That's another way, right? I think that would be the cleanest way, but that that's another issue, so. That'd be an issue for another time, but yes. Uh, but all in all, our roads are in pretty good shape. Yeah. But they've been neglected lately because of budget crunch, crunches, so. Every year, we were putting, I don't know, maybe five years ago, we were putting $250,000 mm -hmm. yeah. in the roads, and then every year we have to cut back and cut back, and now we're down to mm -hmm. 150. Yeah. Right. I mean, we're victims of the of the revenue formula that we have to follow. So mm -hmm. correct. I mean, so, um, well, it, that's another issue. Yeah. For and another. Y years ago, we could pave a mile for 50,000, and now you can't pave a mile for so, less than. Eighty thousand. Well, it's not going to get any cheaper. That <laughs> I can tell. Uh, our frugality has come back to bite us. Uh, I mean, we've cut road budgets. We've uh, held our tax increases to the minimum, and it's it's starting to hurt. And it's it's going to come to the point where the tax increase is going to start skyrocketing. Many years ago, the town borrowed money actually uh, three hundred thousand dollars to do all their roads at one setting that was many years ago it was a yeah. century ago century i know ago. i'm saying i didn't say it was last year <laughs> that may but not some be of a the bad uh, idea though at, at low interest rates today we could borrow half a million million dollars do the roads put it in there and it make a lot, you know, paying off a mortgage or a, a, a loan might be a better way to look at it. Well, we also have, what, five years left, Linda, on the building? Is that right? Uh, it's a long 2009, time. 2009, uh, yes, seven years. So, I mean, we're getting to the 2019, point where, and we we're 14, so yeah. you got five years left. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, we're at least we're closing in on that. So as we move forward, anyhow, we'll we'll start to have some. Well, and then, um, well, if you want to do something, you know, about yeah. the only thing you can afford is to. We can go out for a bit and see what it's going to be. Uh, I think we have to. I, I think we have to go out for a bit just just for comparison's sake to. Our bids that we've done that work in the past, and it's one road is two thousand less than the other, or a thousand more than the other, and you go through all the work. I, I don't have to do the work, so, I'm, but I I think we could just as easily give it to the county. We're going to pave a mile of road, and we're going to do a little maintenance, and they do our snow plowing. Mm -hmm. I mean, to go through the extra work that might take us. I don't think we need to do that. But in the end, last year the bidder, other than the county, could not do the job 100% either. They did not do shouldering. 
Oh, so we would have had to hire somebody. No, they didn't do to seal. Come coat. back in and, and put the gravel down on the shoulders. So. They didn't do seal coating. That was it. That's good. Shouldering, they did. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm glad they right. didn't do seal coating. Okay, why don't you tell me what you want to, well, what roads you want to have done, and we'll go from there. I would say we we do uh, a mile on on Forest, and um, and we do the Valmy, the uh, six hundred and fifty foot uh, overlay on Valmy, uh, I suppose. For one problem with Forest, I guess, is that if we're just going to do an inch and a half. Um, that road does receive a lot of. That's a wedge and overlay, I think you said for the forest. Yeah. yeah, it does receive a lot of farm, heavy farm traffic. So. Well, you can see it didn't hold up very well because it was last done in 2007. Well, that was a seal coat. That was a chip and seal. Well, that was at least trying to get it done. <laughs> well, you know my opinion of chip and seal. No, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Chip and seal, I think, is a waste of money. <laughs> Almost like, okay. All right, so Forest Road from Country View to South Brower, we're going to wedge and seal and... Wedge and overlay. Wedge and overlay. What do you want? Overlay of compacted to one and a quarter, one and a half, or where? Well, at least a one and a half. I'm talking compacted. Compacted, one and a half, yeah. One and a half? All right. Ooh. Bring your checkbook along? Credit card. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's... Uh, an card. That's for us. Let's... If we can go any further, I would opt to do the other part of Forest before I would do Velmi. Well, Velmi is going to be a, a sticker because it's 44 feet wide. Yeah, so you're talking almost 1,300 feet. feet. If you t took it a normal 20, to well, our normal. other rows are either 12 or 18. Right. Yeah. So you can double that. That's be 12, 13. Okay. But if you're going for the wedge and the, and you're the gonna have to inch and a half, you've got over a mile already. Take out on the curb and gutter, and you know, it's going to be you, an expensive project. Are you going to do a mile on forest, and you're going to leave that extra 200 and some feet with nothing? On it? What 200 feet? Well, it says it's 5,490 feet. Well, we do the distance between the two rows. Yeah, uh, I'm so sorry. So we stop in the middle. I'm just sorry. Leave oh. a strip good, good point, John. The 5,900 and... 5,491 feet. Where's that number? Okay. So that'll be over a mile. Yes. That's what we want to do. Okay. That's about all we can do. And then if you get an inch and a half on that, that's about, that'll shot to shoot the budget. How much is inch and a half uh, compacted? Estimate? Uh, 65 uh, to 70. 86,000. 86, and we've got roughly 125,000 to work with. But you're going to wedge it, so I don't know that you need to go with the extra. I mean, you're, you're going to already put that down, then you're going to put it on top. If, we, if yeah, we're going to try and do anything at all, we need to save a couple bucks. We owe 30 miles on the tower. Snow plane, we still have 11,000 left for December. Yeah. So we took, we took the 30, we're taking 30,000 out of the 150 for shower, right? Yep. Which leaves us 120. It leaves us 120,000, and if we do this one, it's 80, I'm guessing 86 now. 50, roughly 50,000 a month. 45,000. 45,000 left. I don't know, your pen must figure differently than mine. I think it's 34,000 left. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you're going on a mile, so yeah. You're probably talking about <coughs> 80,000 feet. Would that get that you? Total. Just continue it on the same lay. Well, okay. Where did you want to go? Which side of? Start on South Brower and go as far as we can for the money we have. Heading west. Well, that would make sense too. I think Doc wants his road done in front of his house too, doesn't he? He's already got it. <laughs> He's got the new that, part. That part's good. That part's good. It's it's up to Matthew Road. 
Yeah, okay. So we're going to go on forest. Well, what did we rate the rest of forest at? I'm looking. Going west from Broward on forest. Yeah. As far as we can go. Forest was a six from Matthew we to well, we did stuff. We did stuff. South yeah. County sort of country view. And yeah. forest, uh, yeah, that would be the next one, right? So I but country view to Matthew. North country view. It's rated as a six. So then I, I wouldn't spend the money to continue paving someplace where the road is in much better shape than other places. Well, yeah, the section we're talking about is a four. Yeah, the section we're talking about, the 5,400 feet, that's fine. But I wouldn't just continue on down the road and overlay right. a six, especially right. when we got, we'd be better mm -hmm. off doing one half of the road through Bellamy mm -hmm. <laughs> and just leave one half. To, so this is what your road's going to look like if we don't do it, and this is what the road could look like. It'd be a demonstration road. <laughs> Put up, like a sign, road, put up a sign that says kind of like, even lanes. Kind of exactly. like somebody's bright idea about putting a speed bump on South could Cape Point Drive, could right? Put a speed bump on there, too. On That'll the side never that happen needs. again. Okay, you guys are making no sense at all. What was the distance? Anyway, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go down and do any more than the mile and whatever, whatever that 5,000 foot mark, and then go someplace else and spend the money where the road is in worse shape. Um, Where do we need to take the money out of for the culverts? That same. Um, no, that can come out of uh, cons uh, repairs and maintenance, which we have. For that, we have budgeted. Forty-five. Uh, a total of twenty-seven thousand five hundred for road maintenance, but that includes mowing. Oh. Our usual, you know, day-to-day -day repairs, which like potholes and culverts would come out of there, and sweeping. So okay, forget that idea. You know, we got some. So say roughly thirty thousand. We got some pretty serious culvert issues, so that maybe we should just use yeah. that money. As I can't remember what a culvert runs us. Well, they're gonna have to dig it up, take it out, you, put a new one in, repaint it. Twenty-five hundred. Your, your uh, hundred twenty-five thousand. Figure out per foot, and we did. Forest Road from Country View to South Broward, 5491. That would leave you only 21,000, or uh, would leave you enough to do 2,186 more feet of road somewhere. So, 2,100, you know, that we, would. We don't have anything that short. Well, I we're, think we're, we better, we, we why don't we hang on to that money and use the for our culverts, yes. get those done. We'll do the one mile of road and see where that takes us to. Okay. Give us thought our next budget hearing. You know, um, nothing else, I think, on Belmy, a, a heavy chip and double nope. seal, a double chip and seal would suffice there. That is that is not a, a highly traveled road. Yeah, that would only be 16 five. So, uh, well, yeah, it's Okay. You could always sweep up the extra chips and bring them down. Using All right, what are we going to advertise for? Are we just going to go with the county? Well, if we're only doing a mile, we could just go with the county. All right. I agree. I, mean, I would I agree. I agree. All right. A five thousand four hundred and ninety-one. <laughs> five thousand four hundred ninety-two feet. Okay, I need that as a. Do you have that recorded as a motion or not? Um, no, I don't have any motion yet. All right. All right. I'll make a motion. And we have Forest Road paved from Country Country View to South Brower, five thousand four hundred ninety-one feet with a wedge and a one and a quarter inch overlay. Had the work be done by the county of Door. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll second that motion. All right, very good. Any other discussion? Further comments? I think we'll do ourselves well to hang on to the excess money. I have no idea what the culverts are going to cost. 
they get a little expensive when you have uh, when you put the employee cost to that. So. I'm sure. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Do we have anything else before us? Do we have anything for next meeting? Hello. Nope. A little more on nuisance. Nuisance. Bring that back. Yeah. Door County Tourism Zone Commission is looking at a possible change to the intergovernmental agreement and the ordinances that each municipality has in regard to the room tax and the process of collecting and so forth. Uh, we're working on some changes that will be presented to the municipalities. Uh, most of it has to do with trying to collect taxes from people that will not participate uh, voluntarily. Uh, it's going to put more teeth in the ordinance so it would be easier for us to collect from them and uh, that will be coming up shortly. What's their official title? Door County what? Door County Tourism Zone Commission. Tourism Zone. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Reminder, if you want to be on a committee or you know somebody that would like to be, make sure they give us a call. Motion to adjourn would be in order. What is the way to adjourn? Second. Motion made and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.